Hi, welcome back to this tutorial set on creating a shader toy porter for OpenGL in Python. Now we've got our IDE PyCharm set up. We need to add in some packages that we can use in order to do this rendering. So we're going to go into the packages, which is at the bottom of the screen here. First one we need is PyOpenGL. So type that in. It's the first one that comes up, click that and then click on install. Once that's finished installing, we also need to get Pi Game. So Pi OpenGL is a wrapper for OpenGL and Pi Game is a basic wrapper to make simple 2D games, but it's also the windowing system that we're going to be using. So type in Pi Game and install that. And the final thing we need is NumPy, which is a maths library. And we require from that its uh, ability to format arrays correctly for OpenGL. OK, so once you have done that, what I'd like you to do also is to get a starter utility file that I have on my website. So if you go to holistic3d.com forward slash resources and have a look for the utils pi file that is on that page, download it, bring it over into your project. Now, first of all, just drag and drop it on the top folder that you've created you'll get this refactoring message just go yeah refactor and it'll come in for you and obviously that was in my dropbox i had to move it okay so we've got that and now what we're going to do is create a couple of little folders in here so we're going to create a directory so right click on the name and then create a directory it'll want a name we're going to call this gl app this is the same directory that i use in my OpenGL and python course and in fact some of this code is very similar in that course you do actually learn what all of this um, compile shader and create program code is doing for this youtube series i'm just giving this to you rather than explaining it all okay so we're going to now put that utils pi file into the gl app and once again it'll want to refactor let's jump straight in and make our first class which will be the base class that you can build other apps on top of so we want to go to our gl app folder right click we're going to go new file and this file is going to be called pi o gl app dot pi okay so in here we're going to import pi game from pi game dot locals import all now that's so we can actually use pi game to capture the mouse we'll also be using pi game as the windowing system and to create the main game main application loop and clock we're also going to input the os which will allow us to position our window where we can actually see it or more importantly for me so that you can actually see it when i run it and it's not somewhere else on my screen so pi ogl app and in here we need a few lines inside a constructor so we want def in it self and we're going to pass through to here a screen pause x screen pause y screen width and screen height because we'll use these for actually setting up our window let's make sure that's a comma in there all right so the first thing we're going to do is actually set up where this window will appear on the screen so os environ square bracket single quote sdl underscore video window pause equals percent d percent d which is obviously going to bring in integer values for our actual positions and then we need a percent sign like this and brackets screen pause x screen 
pos y. All right, next line down, we will set up and remember our width and height. So self.screen width equals screen width. Self.screen height equals screen height. Okay, then we run pygame dot init. So this is actually set up and call Pygame's own initialization. These next few lines are basically setting the Pygame environment so that you can use OpenGL successfully with it. Some of these things may not work on Windows. These are definitely required for Mac and other people have actually used these particular lines on Windows have found that it doesn't work and it could be based on your actual graphics card. So don't freak out if you're on Windows and this actually doesn't work for you because chances are your graphics card's going to be fine anyway. So pygame.gl multi sample buffers one and then pygame.display.gl set attribute pygame.gl multi sample samples and we want to make that four and I notice I've got a semicolon on the end I've been swapping between vertex shader coding uh, C sharp and Python so it makes for a lot of misplaced semicolons um, so pygame dot display dot gl set attribute and this one is pygame dot GL context. Now this actually is important if you're on Windows, this one here, because it's saying the to use the core version of OpenGL when it comes to requiring that. And so in here we put, this is actually mask the first one, and then the second one is pygame.gl context core very important that line on a Mac pygame dot display dot gl set attribute now this is something I found I need on a Mac doesn't necessarily work or is required on Windows but what it is is it's setting the depth buffer to 32 in fact even on a Mac you don't need this line except it gives you a very shallow depth buffer, which means you're going to end up with a lot of Z fighting in your scene. So Z fighting is basically about the depth of where pixels should be drawn. And if you have a very sort of shallow depth buffer, then there's not a lot of difference between their actual depths. And therefore you can get that Z fighting thing going on where they sort of can't figure out which pixel is behind which pixel. And so, yeah, so that's always a good thing to have. All right. So we want self dot screen now equals pygame dot display dot set mode now set mode is going to set the actual window up so we need the coordinates for that or not the coordinates the size so screen width and screen height in a set of brackets of their own because it's basically like a tuple of two integer values and then we're going to create a double buffer so double buffers in OpenGL are for animation basically okay so you end up with two frame buffers and throughout the game loop or graphics loop they switch back and forth you'll see the code that does that in a minute so it means that OpenGL can actually be drawing in the back buffer and then when it comes time to switch or when it's finished drawing in that buffer it just switches it straight to the front so you get that full frame you don't see parts of the frame being drawn and then in here we need OpenGL like that Okay, next line, pygame.display.set caption. This, this is just for you if you want to put some message across the top of your window. I'm going to put shader toy open GL port. That'll do. You can write any string you like in there. And then we're going to go self program ID which I'll talk about when we start doing our shader code e equals none self self dot clock equals pygame dot time dot clock 
Now, this is another important thing, the clock, because it's going to basically keep track of your frame rate. So you've got your init. We're now going to create a main loop in here, and it's going to first have done equals false self dot initialize. And that will happen in our overriding class, which we write in the next video. While not done for event in pygame.event.get. So this is pygame again in control of the window and getting any user events. So event.type equals pygame.quit. So basically this is going to sit around and wait for you to click on your window close icon that's usually across the top bar of any window and then done will be equal to true at that point which will quit out of this loop okay so we'll kind of come back here and go self dot display again something else that will be written in our overriding method pi game dot display dot flip self dot clock dot tick now what this is doing we're going to set it to 60 is going to freeze your or at least try and keep your loop ticking over at 60 frames per second and you can adjust that to whatever you would like and then outside of our while loop it's pi game dot quit all right great so that is our base class when we come back in the next video we will overwrite this and actually get a window to display so that you can see it running.